In this video, we are going to talk about the top 10 drummers of all time. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates. One of the most captivating musical experiences is hearing a drummer give it his all. Rhythm is something we all naturally grasp and seeing it played out with the speed, agility, control, and athleticism that all great drummers possess leaves an indelible impression. That isn't to claim that technical prowess equates to superb drumming. Many of the most talented drummers are pioneers. Some people are known for their ability to build elaborate structures out of sound. Others painstakingly contributed their beats to a wide and historic discography. Ten drummers who fit into one or more of these criteria are listed below. Ten inspiring musicians who helped to make drumming one of the most exciting chapters in the history of music by bringing a unique creative voice and some truly acrobatic limbs to their craft. 10 of history's best drummers. Number 10. Cindy Blackman. Cindy Blackman began turning heads and raising eyebrows on the New York jazz scene in the mid-1980s, influenced by masters such as Max Roach, Art Blakey, and Tony Williams. Her talent and freshness rapidly earned her renown and admiration, especially from Lenny Kravitz, with whom Blackman spent nearly two decades traveling as a drummer. She's best known for her collaborations with Kravitz, but she's been steadily releasing albums as the head of her own band since the late 1980s. She focuses on jazz, which is her first and greatest love, and which she performs with unusual vitality and spontaneity. She's also dabbled in rock, funk, R and amp, B, and other genres. Here's a lovely story, after her time with Kravitz, Blackman began touring with Carlos Santana, the legendary guitarist. After tearing through one of her outstanding drum solos at a show in Illinois that year, Santana asked Blackman to marry him. Right there on stage, they were engrossed. It has to be an incredible solo. Number 9. Phil Collins. What, the cheesy pop ballad singer from the 1980s? Yes, exactly the same. You might not realize it, but Phil Collins was also one of the most talented drummers of all time. He had a hand in some of the most experimental rock songs ever conceived as the rhythmic engine that drove the band Genesis for almost two decades. Genesis is the quintessential progressive rock band, with vast melodies, fanciful lyrics, and plenty of virtuosity. They loved crafting sophisticated and complicated music until they turned mainstream in the 1980s. Collins, however, always negotiated these mazes deftly, kept his comrades in time, and did it all with panache, no matter how hectic things became. Number 8. Al Jackson, Jr. Al Jackson, Jr. was a renowned session drummer at Stax Records, the Memphis-based label responsible for some of the best popular music ever recorded, from the early 1960s until his tragic death in 1975. The human timekeeper's unusual drumming style would define the southern soul sound, grace hundreds of classic compositions. Jackson was a member of Booker T. and the MGs, Stax's studio band. They were founded in 1962, and their hallmark song, Green Onions, was produced the same year. Jackson and his fellow MGs are pounding away behind the limelight on every Stax anthem you remember, nonchalantly putting down grooves for the ages. On Wilson Pickett's In the Midnight Hour, Otis Redding's Sittin' On, The Dock of the Bay, and Sam and Amp, Dave's Hold On, I'm Comin', He's There. He adds just enough to his rhythms to keep them lively, energetic, and fascinating without interfering with the flow. Pay attention to the subtle tint of swing he introduces to these mostly straight lines. Number 7. Evelyn Glennie. The journey of Dame Evelyn Glennie is very astounding. Despite her blindness, she has established herself as one of the world's best percussionists, a fantastic performer, a groundbreaking composer, a leading interpreter of contemporary music, and a captivating speaker and educator who communicates new ways of playing and thinking about music. The Scott was the first to perform a percussion concerto at the proms in 1992, helping to propel percussion into the spotlight. Over the course of her career, she has commissioned over 200 pieces of music, inspiring and bringing to the world the most cutting-edge modern music composed for her family of instruments. Number 6. Mike Portnoy. Remember those pillars, jazz, and rock? Between them, you can find genres that blend the two. Jazz fusion is one. Progressive rock is another, which is taken to an entirely new level by progressive metal. 
And that's where we find the band Dream Theater, as well as their jaw-dropping drummer, Mike Portnoy. This is music that's all about intensity and complexity on every level. Have a quick listen, for example, to The Dance of Eternity, from the 1999 album Metropolis, Point 2. Building on the foundation of a simple four-to-the-floor pattern, Portnoy weaves together a rhapsodic series of strands into a sprawling percussive tapestry. Each beat is as complicated as the fills that bookend it and is executed with metronomic precision. When switching from one time signature to another, Portnoy is as fluid as he is when merging different drumming styles. Who else could follow that honky-tonk passage with a blast beat and make it sound natural? The level of inventiveness is astounding. Number 5. Senri Kawaguchi. Senri Kawaguchi may not be a household name, but he may be the most thrilling drummer on the planet. She was the youngest player ever to be named to Drummer World's renowned Top 500 list at the age of 13. She's receiving accolades and is being dubbed one to watch by a growing number of fans. Rock and jazz are two foundations in the realm of drumming, as evidenced by the selections genres that inspire extended drumming. Working with legendary figures like bassist Bootsy Collins and fellow drummer Steve Gadd, Kawaguchi has been able to contribute flair, inventiveness, and utility to a varied array of collaborations. Her on-screen presence is excellent. She began organizing touring jam sessions and performing at jazz festivals while still in school. Later on, she began to promote idol groups and was invited to perform with movers and shakers while in Japan. Do you want to see what all the hype is about? Take a look at this solo she did a few years back. Number 4. Tony Williams. The experienced and hugely brilliant critic Robert Christgau knows a lot about music, despite his polarizing nature. And, in the 1970s, when jazz drummer Tony Williams and many other drummers were at the pinnacle of their skills, Christgau dubbed him the greatest in the world. He was in groups headed by Miles Davis and Herbie Hancock in the 1960s, and he played trailblazing and impressive enough music. Williams and guitarist John McLaughlin, however, co-founded the Tony Williams Lifetime in 1969. And it was at this point that he truly let loose, taking use of the groundwork laid by people like Rich to broaden the function of the jazz drummer even more. On albums like Emergency and Ego, he uses a broad palette to create soundscapes. He flaunts his perplexing polyrhythmic cymbal action, his tempo warping, and his penchant for undermining meter by abruptly altering emphasis. One thing is certain, a performance by Williams is always a spectacle. Number 3. Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich, a Brooklyn native, has always been gifted. By the age of two, he was performing vaudeville and drumming on stage. His precocious aptitude made him a sought-after sideman in the 1930s, when he was a little older, and he played in ensembles led by Artie Shaw, Tommy Dorsey, and Charlie Parker. He started his own big band in 1946. The band lasted until Rich's death in 1987, despite going through various changes. It was the stage for his most audacious musical experiments and craziest displays of ability. When interest in old-fashioned swing orchestras was declining in the 1960s, the big band exploded, and they have some of the most snappy musicianship you'll ever hear. Number 2. Neil Peart. Neil Peart was the incredible drummer for Rush. He was picked as the band's drummer because he reminded them of the Who's Keith Moon. After all was said and done, the only thing he had in common was his tough guy demeanor. Moon's timing was sloppy, but Pert was regarded as the most precise and technically proficient drummer of all time. If you had the chance to see him perform live, you would have been blown away by his absurdly enormous drum kit. The gear was essentially wrapped around him and included digital samplers, among other things. But none of it went to waste. Pert made it a point to use every single element of the kit during solos. Number 1. John Bonham. John Bonham is to rock what Rich is to jazz. The standard. This is the benchmark. The guy who, more than anyone else, exemplified and defined what it meant to be a drummer. Bonham is a player you'll immediately learn to recognize by ear for his strength, timbre modification, and seamless handling of the rhythm. He was from the West Midlands in England, a region rich in rock history, also home to Black Sabbath. 
He was a member of Band of Joy before he and another member, singer Robert Plant, joined Led Zeppelin. The world was gained by the disappearance of the Band of Joy. Bonham rose to fame with Led Zeppelin. What do you think about our video? Let us know in the comment box below. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Thank you.